I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Over the years, sleep has become one of my top priorities and something I cover a lot on this show. I've struggled with quality sleep at times and I've tried just about everything to improve it. And when I say everything, as a regular listener of the show, you will know that's a lot. Now, one of the best tools I've discovered is Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. And I'm not the only one having success with this product. Their website's actually loaded with positive testimonials and five-star ratings from people getting the same results every day. So if you're someone who's having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, one of the best things you can do is to start getting enough magnesium. But I want to warn you, don't just run down to the health food store and buy the first magnesium supplement you can find. They are not all created equal. In fact, most magnesium supplements only use the two cheapest synthetic forms. And since they're not full spectrum, they won't fix your magnesium deficiency or help you sleep better. There are actually seven unique forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you want to experience its calming, sleep enhancing effects. And that's why I recommend and use Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. It's the one I use every day. In fact, true story, I just emptied a capsule into a glass of water before this very recording because I find it to be really relaxing and just balancing to my brain. So all you do is take two capsules before you go to bed and you will be amazed by how much better you sleep and how much more rested you feel when you wake up. So if you want to check it out, we've got an exclusive offer for you listeners at magbreakthrough.com slash Luke. That's spelled M-A-G-B-R-E-A-K-T-R-O-U-G-H, magbreakthrough.com slash Luke. And if you use the code Luke10 during checkout, you're going to save 10%. That's magbreakthrough.com slash Luke. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know I've done many episodes on the dangers of blue light and how important it is to avoid blue light in your home. Now, in my discovery of this fact, I've also discovered how difficult it is to find awesome light bulbs to solve this problem. Over the years, I have found some bulbs that have less blue and green light, both of which trash your melatonin and thus your sleep, but it's been difficult to find a bulb with zero blue light that doesn't flicker. Flicker is when a light turns on and off so fast that you can't perceive it with your conscious mind. However, even though you can't see flicker, your brain sees it and it causes a lot of neurological stress. So you definitely want to avoid flicker. There are also some red light bulbs on the market that don't have any blue, but they're powered by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which ruins them because it increases the EMF in your environment. So I was ecstatic when I discovered that my friends over at blueblocks.com developed this bulb called the Lumi Sleep Plus. Not only does it have zero blue light, it also has no flicker and very low EMF because it's not Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It's also non-dimmable as dimming the light will increase the flicker rate and the EMF. So these guys nailed it from all sides. The bulbs also have a very long lifespan. They last 25,000 hours and you can get them with fittings that fit standard USA lights and lamps, which is really cool. So if you're ready to eliminate the blue light in your environment and still be able to see where you're going, I would highly recommend that you check out the Lumi Sleep Plus bulbs. You can find them at blueblocks.com slash lifestylist. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X, blueblocks.com slash lifestylist. And when you get over there and fill up your cart with Lumi bulbs, you can use the code lifestylist at checkout and save 15%. This is Luke Story from lukestory.com and you are listening to SoloCast show number 349 with questions taken from the Lifestylist podcast Facebook group. Request to join us in the group and you can ask and answer questions along with over 6,000 other Lifestylist podcast listeners. Again, hop onto Facebook and search for the group, The Lifestylist Podcast, and you can join us there. Okay, today we're going to cover a few great questions taken from listeners in the group, such as blue light mitigation strategies, natural pain relief with supplements, cold therapy, and body work deuterium depleted water hacks, making structured water at home, and practices and supplements for brain function and focus. Now, before we do this data download, I'm obligated to remind you that I am not a doctor or healthcare professional. I'm simply sharing two decades of experience in self-healing. 
So make sure to consult your doctor and inner guidance before undergoing any medical treatment or alternative healing modalities mentioned in this show. Our first question is from Debbie. She says, please suggest where I can purchase quality non-LED light bulbs. You cannot find them in the stores in California. And I feel your pain, Debbie. When I was living in California, I found it impossible to order or buy high quality, healthy light bulbs. And that has something to do with some environmental legislature put into place by the totalitarian government in California. No other way to say it. I'm sure they have their reasons, but it never made sense to me. So what a friend of mine did, who will remain unnamed, is while he was living in California, he simply ordered the light bulbs he wanted to put in his home and uh, delivered them to someone out of state who then shipped them to California. Now, I do have some great incandescent bulbs and different bulbs that I'm going to talk about now that are linked, as most things are, that I'm going to refer to at lukestory.com slash store. Now, for those of you that don't know why Debbie would be wanting to skip out on non-LED light bulbs, uh, I'll go ahead and explain some of the issues that uh, they have. There are two problems with lighting, and uh, that would be flicker and color temperature. Of course, the color temperature of most light bulbs, especially LED bulbs and fluorescent bulbs, is that that color temperature is found nowhere on earth inside the visible light spectrum created by our friend the sun. So in an effort to make lights cheaper, longer lasting, and use less energy, light manufacturers have made lights that are not good for you. And they produce something called non-native blue light. So it's an alien light source that is linked to all kinds of problems. I've done many shows on it and uh, will continue to do so. So on to the solution. Uh, I linked to some great amber incandescent bulbs, as I said, on my web store, but you'd have to have them shipped somewhere if you live in California, as I just described. Not recommending that you break the law, but I have heard of that happening. Incandescent bulbs are great, but they do sometimes have some flicker if they're under 100 watts. Uh, What makes flicker bad, by the way, is that, again, uh, light does not flicker naturally. So the only time through our evolution that you would have been exposed to flickering light would have been the random flicker of firelight. Or, of course, if you were running, chasing something through the woods and there was sunlight coming through the trees or if you're running away from something. So it's obviously a stressor to the nervous system because your eyes... Uh, in an imperceivable way, are trying to constantly adjust to the flicker of that light. And in fact, uh, in some television programming, and it's not called programming by accident, uh, they have actually inserted flicker to make television shows uh, more hypnotic. And also there's a lot of problems with flicker coming from computer screens and phones, etc., So uh, if you get good quality lighting, it's not so important whether or not It is incandescent or LED because thankfully some companies that I'm going to mention are making LED lights that are uh, non-blue or full spectrum and also free of flicker. I found a company called waveformlighting.com and they've got some flicker-free LED lighting. They don't appear to have red or amber nighttime bulbs, but they do have some nice full spectrum day bulbs. And I use personally full spectrum bulbs during the day because what I'm trying to do is mimic that full spectrum of color or temperature of the sun. And that's uh, great for staying awake and mood elevation and things like that. Uh, Blue light and full spectrum light can be used in winter and darker months. And they're quite popular in Scandinavian countries and uh, places to the far north that don't get a lot of daylight to actually deal with uh, seasonal depression disorder, I think it's called. Basically, people get depressed when they're cut off from the sun. Another great solution here is a company called Blue Blocks. I'm sure you've heard me talk about them on the show. They make some red flicker-free LED bulbs that are called Lumi Sleep that are very cool. I actually just got a box of those and installed them here in our temporary apartment. And they create a really beautiful warm red light in the evening and they do not flicker at all. Again, that's Blue Blocks and the bulbs are called Lumi Sleep. And of course, they're called Sleep because blue light prevents you from sleeping because it shuts down the production of melatonin up to four hours after exposure. It also uh, does produce cortisol, the opposite of melatonin, which keeps you awake. So if you're trying to stay up all night, keep all the blue lights on in your house. If you're trying to sleep, I recommend, and what I try to do, I'm not always successful at this because life happens, 
But once the sun goes down, I do my best to either put on some blue blocking glasses from a company like Raw Optics or Blue Blocks or my upcoming line, Gilded. More on that later. I've decided uh, to take it into my own hands and create cool, fashionable blue blockers because oftentimes they're not so much so, or at least by my estimation. And if I don't put on blue blockers, I will activate all of the incandescent amber color bulbs or red bulbs at night to help me wind down. Because when the sun goes down, that's indicating to all creatures on earth that it is now nighttime. But we've tricked ourselves into thinking it's daytime by illuminating our uh, inside environments with light that uh, tells your brain it's the middle of the day. Just doesn't make sense. I mean, think about it just from common sense, fundamentally, how we've evolved to interact with light. So that's a great question and hopefully a couple great solutions for you. The next question is from Jonathan. He said, what are your best natural remedies for symptomatic pain relief? First, I'd say working on your inflammation is a good place to start. So stop eating inflammatory foods like grains, lectins, and sugar. Do ice baths every day. Morosco Forge is my current favorite. That's the one I have at home and I absolutely love it. It stays at whatever temperature you want it to stay, which for me is around 35 degrees or so. Uh, the water is also self-cleaned with ozone. And uh, this particular ice bath, although it plugs in, has zero EMF. In fact, I did a video on it recently with Brian Hoyer, wherein we discovered that not only does it not produce any EMF, it is actually incredibly grounding because it's uh, grabbing DC current from the earth and it's a metal tank on the inside. So you're getting an incredible grounding therapy at the same time as cold therapy. You can also uh, do what I used to do, and that is get a Sears uh, chest freezer and fill it with water. Heat, uh, not heat it, <laughs> you don't want to heat it. <laughs> fill it up with water and uh, turn it on and bring it down to the temperature rather that you want, that cold temperature, and uh, then unplug it. Huge asterisk there, unplug it. Don't get in something plugged in uh, that's not you know, made specifically for that. And you've got yourself a homemade ice bath for, oh, I don't know, five to $800. In fact, if you Google Luke Story ice bath, you'll see an article that I did a couple of years ago with Ben Greenfield. He ended up putting it in his book, Boundless, where I broke down all the steps to creating your own ice bath. However, I got to say, uh, I did save some money doing that. You know, the Morozco Forge ice baths are a couple thousand dollars to a few, so not accessible to everyone. But it was a huge pain in the ass uh, after a while to always have to change out the water. You know, when you let water sit, even when it's really cold, it grows bacteria and gets pretty swampy. So the homemade ice bath uh, is much cheaper, but does have disadvantages. However, I got to say for pain killing for me and just squelching inflammation pre, post workout, after flying, there's nothing that beats an ice bath. Now, there are cryotherapy clinics around. Uh, it's become quite popular. I like cryotherapy too. Uh, it's shorter in duration. So if cold is tough for you, you've only got to last about three minutes in there. However, I definitely prefer the benefits of cold therapy in water over cold air or nitrogen gas, which is how many of the cryotherapy units uh, become cold. But getting yourself cold is a great way to squelch inflammation and pain. Now, as someone who's uh, been able to solve a lot of my physical ailments over the years, uh, body pain has been something that has been persistent despite a low inflammation diet most of the time and doing ice baths and different things like that. So I definitely have explored many body work modalities and here are a few that I found to be incredibly useful. The first one being neurocranial restructuring with a recent guest, Dr. Dean Howell. So you can check out that episode and learn all about that. Uh, that was an incredible four sessions that I did with Dean. I'm looking forward to tracking him down and doing some more. That was not only for pain, but just for a whole body and brain reboot. Absolutely incredible stuff. And we've got laser therapy with Power Medic Lasers. That's the brand that I use. If you want to learn more about laser therapy for pain, check out episode 110. Something I do on an almost daily basis is targeted vibration therapy with something called the Hypervolt. This is a little gun, essentially. Uh, imagine kind of a drill with a ball on the end <laughs> is what it is. It's a lot quieter, thank God, and it has a very specific frequency that uh, brings oxygen and blood into target areas. It also uh, is great at just releasing tension from different muscle groups and joints. 
And I use this thing all the time, especially pre and post workout, but it's great just for targeting a sore hip or shoulder, bicep, wherever your pain happens to be. I'm a huge fan of the vibration guns. The Hypervolt is the best one that I've found because it's really strong. The battery lasts forever and uh, it's quite quiet, the new one at least. I used to have something called a Theragun and I think they've come out with something quieter since, but the old one I had literally sound like a belt sander or a drill. It was just like, it was really loud and not relaxing. Of course, when you're trying to alleviate pain in your body and relax, having something really loud next to you doesn't do you any favors. Something I found to be really useful is FRC or functional range conditioning that was developed by Dr. Andrea Spina. And I've been doing that off and on with my brother Cody Story prior to moving Texas. And I'm now doing sessions here at an incredible place in Austin called Alive and Well located in Bee Cave near my home outside of Austin. And um, the FRC is incredible because it's not so much targeting pain, which is of course a symptom, but really going to the root cause and helping your joints to regain their range of motion. When your joints, like in my case, my right hip has very limited motion, then when I move about the world, uh, it steals that motion from other joints like my sacrum. So FRC is to me the best system created to actually bring functionality back into your joints and get that range of motion so you can move freely through space and time. Now I was going to go up and do an episode and get some treatments with Andrew Ospina, but he's located in Canada. But when the lockdown situation happened, uh, Canada became quite inhospitable to travel and unfortunately it's only gotten worse. And for those of you located in Canada, my prayers are with you. It looks pretty tough up there. I'm sure people are adapting, but uh, I am not in any hurry to travel to Canada at the moment. However, I'll definitely be doing the FRC here in Austin with an authorized and fully trained practitioner. Something else I recently discovered is called the Feldenkrais method. That's F-E-L-D-E-N-K-R-A-I-S. I heard about the Feldenkrais method some time ago, but I didn't know a practitioner until I moved here to Austin and became friendly with my friend Marius, who's a Lifestylist podcast listener. And he introduced me to his partner, Michelle Drerup. Actually, it's funny. Uh, in about an hour and a half, she's coming over to do a session. And uh, I've done one with her so far. And that day, my lower back was just brutalizing me. And I thought, this is a great test. You know, it's like, it, it wasn't a day where I felt kind of normal. It was a day where for whatever reason, my back was really on fire. She comes in and does her method and no joke. Uh, it was probably about 90 minutes. It was our first one. So it included some analysis. And by the time she left, my whole body was out of pain. It was incredible. So uh, that's why I'm continuing to do it uh, today even so. And you can find Michelle if you're in the Austin area. I'll give her a shout out because her work is incredible. You can find her at michelledrerup.com. That's D-R-E-R-U-P. Uh, by the way, all of the links that I mention here in the show will be present in the show notes for this episode. So know that you can find them all there if you're driving or running around somewhere listening to headphones. Don't worry about remembering all this. We have clickable links in the show notes all the time. You can also find them um, on your podcast player, depending on the player, or of course, for this episode at lukestory.com. Another thing I've found to be incredibly useful over the years is acupuncture. Now, when I lived in Koreatown in LA, there were acupuncture studios everywhere. So uh, at that time, I had insurance from the film industry and one of the things that that particular insurance allowed you to do was get a number of acupuncture treatments every year. So I would use up all my treatments and I loved it. It put me in an incredibly relaxed theta state and was very useful for pain. Then later on, I moved into something called electroacupuncture, which is where a practitioner puts little electro stickers on your acupuncture points and dials them up to specific frequencies, which is absolutely incredible. And I wish I could do it justice because it's very technical skill, but is a great uh, marriage of old school Eastern medicine and uh, Western medicine. And if you're in LA, there's a guy out there named Dr. Roy Page, who is incredible. In fact, I was really sad to leave LA and not be able to be treated by a uh, Dr. Roy Page, because his work is very unique. And he's a guy that's just committed to all the things. I mean, he's a, a multifaceted practitioner in the field of physical therapy and healing. 
So you're super lucky if you live out there, look up Dr. Roy Page. I've also been a huge fan of chiropractic for a very long time. Uh, I would recommend, again, if you're in LA, I'm not anymore. I'm going to keep giving you things here. And of course, everyone else that's not in LA either is like, what? But uh, out there, because some people will, of course, ask, uh, I was seeing Dr. Har Hari at the Transformational Healing Universe in LA. It's down on Robertson, kind of near Pico. And they have all sorts of other modalities there as well. He does laser therapy and uh, pulse centers, PMF, and all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you're fortunate enough to live there, uh, still, you're probably a bit stressed out (laughs) because that's what that place can do to you, despite its many benefits and gifts, of course. So I'd check out the Transformational Healing Universe and see Dr. Har Hari. If you can find a pulse centers location where you live uh, and they're all over the place, that's great for healing some injuries as well. You can learn more about the pulse centers PEMF on episode 212. And pulse centers for me was great for working on uh, joint mobility and just bringing electrons into any area of my body. So I use it on my knees, ankles, back, hips, elbows, shoulders, and I would just hammer those areas with energy. And the pulse centers PMF is much different than something like the amp coil, uh, the halo, the biocharger, different PEMF um, technology that I use, the higher dose PMF mat. There's a lot of great PEMF products on the market, but pulse centers is the one I think that is most specifically useful for injuries and pain. So I think if you look on their website, they have a practitioner locator and you can probably find one in most larger towns or major cities around the US, if not the whole world. There's another alignment modality called Egoscue. It's the Egoscue method. And I've played with that here or there. It's very effective for creating stability and alignment in your skeleton. But I want to warn you, it does require some discipline to do it on your own once you get the official protocol from a trainer. How it typically works with the Egoscue method is that you'll go into one of their centers, see a practitioner, they'll do an assessment and then uh, train you on some different movements and give you assignments that you follow in an app. And then you leave and until you come back, it's up to you. Now, if you had the time, energy and money, you could just work with an Egoscue method trainer on an ongoing basis. I think it would be very effective. However, I found it to be a little bit difficult because it's just one of those things I had to apply self-discipline to really get the benefit out of. But here and there, I'll still bust it out and do a couple of the Egoscue moves. But um, I'm looking forward someday to finding another practitioner and really going all in with that. There's another modality called NuFit. And NuFit is a um, electric stimulation therapy that's very cutting edge and high tech. Uh, I was stoked to find NuFit is actually based here in Austin. So I went in for one session with Allison. We loved it. We're going to be doing more of that. You can get a NuFit machine yourself, but they're, I think, around $20,000. They're used a lot in professional sports. And similar to PEMF, I mean, it's a different uh, mechanism of action entirely, but you're bringing blood flow and stimulating nerves and muscles and tendons and ligaments in a very targeted way. So new fits, an incredible modality, something I did uh, uh, most of the time when I would go to conferences, they would often have a booth there, whether it was the Bulletproof Conference or Paleo FX here in Austin. And I love new fit and always kind of had my eye on it but was unable to be consistent with it until I came out here and found that they were about 15 minutes away, their official headquarters. So I definitely recommend NuFit as well for pain. Another great therapy for pain and recovery is called TRT soft wave therapy. It's a non-invasive therapeutic device that uses a patented breakthrough method of shock wave generation. So it brings really unprecedented advantages to sports and regenerative medicine. It rapidly relieves chronic pain and also greatly accelerates recoveries with sustained results. I did one session back in Los Angeles and forgive me if you're listening. God, I didn't have her name in my show notes. If I can find it in time, we'll put it back in there. I see a lot of people do a lot of things. It's hard for me to keep track. But uh, if you look up TRT soft wave therapy, you'll likely be able to find someone hopefully nearby that has one of the machines. Again, they're really expensive machine, not something that many people could have on their own. And I'm assuming best to practice with someone who's been trained and really knows how to use it. But it's pretty incredible. It's uh, it's a wild ride. It goes really deep. It's like, you know, when you get a massage or some body work and you have a really big muscle, say like something on your thigh or your glute, and it's really hard to get in there, even on the side of your hip where you have that hip joint. 
and it's just like a little bit um, gristly in there and it's kind of just hard to massage. Well, TRT, because it uses shock waves, really has an uncanny ability to get in there. And if you happen to be near Sarasota, Florida, a uh, upcoming guest, Dr. John Laurence, uh, uses TRT with great success. He's a huge proponent of this. And we're going to learn about that in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned for Dr. John Laurence. If you're in Florida, you could look him up now. Again, he's in Sarasota. So those are a few useful tools and modalities that might assist you with your pain problems. Now let's move into some supplements. The best thing I've ever found for pain is something called Kratom. Some people call it Kratom. People from Southeast Asia call it Kratom. And it's simply a powdered tree leaf from Asia. I mean, it's, uh, it's really strange in that it's so effective and can be quite strong to the point that some people use it recreationally. I would not recommend that personally uh, because it is a natural opiate. But what I find interesting about this particular plant medicine is that it doesn't require any processing to be effective. Now you can find, and I've experimented with this a little bit, some extracts of Kratom or Kratom online. However, uh, they can be quite intoxicating. I mean, really good for an acute pain kind of situation perhaps, but again, when it's processed and not in its natural state, then you've kind of got uh, humankind's hands in there mucking things up and it could be problematic if not addictive. Now, there are a lot of brands of uh, Kratom on the market and there have been a lot of reported issues with contamination from things like mold, yeast, uh, fungi, heavy metals. I mean, when you're talking about a commodity product like this that is in a relative gray area in terms of its legality. Now, it is legal in the United States, but as I said, it does have the uh, potential to get you pretty wasted if you were to take enough of it. Um, so it's kind of, you know, legal, but there are, how do I say, it's kind of the wild west in the Kratom market. So if you just, you know, do a web search of the best Kratom, you'll get tons of different websites and it's very difficult to vet which ones test for those uh, contaminants. So the brand I use is called Super Speciosa. And again, you could find that at lukestory.com slash store. And I vetted them. They sent me a bunch of product and it works really well and it's very clean. So for a source, that's what I would recommend. At least that's what I'm using. Now, because it's an opiate, many people use Kratom to come off street opiates like, you know, heroin, et cetera, and also pain meds. So it's a really incredible plant medicine if used intentionally and uh, with some degree of caution. You definitely want to be careful. It is said to be potentially addictive as are the other opiates. Now, personally, as a recovered heroin addict uh, for over two decades now, I think well, 24 years, I've been using Kratom for a few years here and there and I've never felt at all addicted to it. I only do it like five or six times a day every day. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's just kind of thing that I'll do if I'm in some pain. I mean, I really use it for its intended purpose. Every once in a while, I might be chilling out to watch a movie or something and take a couple and just sort of relax. I've pushed the threshold a bit, especially with the extracts and felt it a bit more than I wanted to. And it's not for me a particularly pleasurable feeling. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of a weird vibe. It's a weird mood. So I maybe take two, three capsules of it if I'm in pain. I use it actually uh, where I find it to be really helpful is uh, in air travel because my back often hurts when I'm flying. And there's just also a lot of anxiety in the air, especially flying right now. I mean... I don't even want to fly because it's just such a shit show at the moment. Someone might be trying to stick something in my arm on the way on the plane. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But uh, it is useful. And um, this might be, I think the addictive potential of something like Kratom could be higher if you are someone who has a lot of unresolved emotional trauma, PTSD, et cetera because you might be wanting to numb your emotions. So what I would recommend is not trying to use something like Kratom to run away from emotional pain like I was in my younger years, but to really deal with your emotional pain, trauma, loss, betrayal, whatever it is that is causing you to want to escape reality. Uh, there are many ways to deal with that. We've talked about it on uh, many other shows, meditation, etc., all forms of therapy, maybe even plant medicines in some, but not all cases. So if uh, your pain in your body is originating from something emotional, which is very likely, 
uh, I would recommend really going for that before I'd try to run to um, an exogenous painkiller like Kratom. And again, I would exercise extreme caution with frequent use. Now on the safer plant medicine side, we've got kava. It's also great for pain with zero risk for dependency. What uh, Kava is a natural alternative to benzodiazepines like Xanax and Valium. So not classically used for pain, but more so for anxiety. And oftentimes, emotional anxiety is something that leads to body tension and thus pain. When it comes to kava, again, like kratom, it's the wild west out there. There's a lot of really bogus kratom on the market. And so it's something you really want to be mindful about uh, so that you're not only buying something that's free of contaminants and, you know, has a a true statement on the ingredient deck on the label, but also something that has the right strain and that has been processed in the correct way to give you the desired effect. To learn more about kava, I'd recommend checking out episodes 219 and 314 to learn more about it. Now for a slightly more intoxicating pain-killing blend, uh, there is a company called Feel Free that make a drink with a very specific strain of kratom as well as kava. And uh, I met the owner of that company, JW, here in town. Recently, I was introduced by, I think it was Josh Trent. And he sent me a box of these things. And <laughs> the first day I got it, uh, you know, I went to get the mail at the house where we're not living yet because that's where I get my mail. And I was like, ooh, the feel free came. And now I've done a fair amount of Kratom and I've done a fair amount of Kava. I think I've even mixed them and it wasn't really a good look for me. I didn't, I didn't like the feel of those kind of competing, but... According to Josh and uh, also my, my brother, brother Cal here, they both love this drink, feel free. So I got it and it was in the car and Alice and I went on a hike and I just chugged a whole one. It's maybe, you know, four ounces, something like that, like a little shot, kind of like those little ginger elixirs about that size, if you know what I mean. Pounded that, we went on a hike and I felt really good. I felt free. I felt great. And then I started noticing about halfway through the hike, I wasn't fatigued or like feeling like I took a downer or anything like that. But I started, I started getting kind of TMI. You know what I mean? After you've had a couple of drinks, your inhibitions lower and you start just saying shit that you would normally not say. Now, luckily I was with my beloved Allison and she knows me better than any human being on the planet. So there's nothing I could say uh, that would <laughs> shock her. But I just found myself kind of having that drunk motor mouth feeling. And I realized, oh man, that thing was super strong. Now I felt great and had a great hike, didn't injure myself. It was all good. I mean, I was in nature. It was beautiful. Uh, you know, went, went in the water a little bit and had a great time. So that was Allison's introduction to this drink, Feel Free. One night she wanted to relax and I think maybe had a little pain in her body. So when I wasn't around, she pounded a whole bottle just like I had done and uh, she was not feeling very well. She's a very sensitive being and it was um, gave her definitely kind of an opiate sort of feeling and little nausea and just like laid out. I mean, I came home, she was laying in the bed. She's out on the balcony right now. I don't know if she wants me to share this story, but that's what happened. I don't think it's too incriminating. So what I would recommend with this drink called Feel Free and we'll link to it again in the show notes. Um, I'll probably be an affiliate for them and put them on my web store, but I don't think it's up there quite yet. Uh, but I do like it. But what I'd recommend is just drink a quarter of one when you're not working, see how you feel. You know, every human biology is so different. Uh, there are things that I can take very little of, like something like modafinil, which we'll talk about in one of the upcoming questions. A quarter tab of modafinil and I'm super, super awake. I mean, I'm very sensitive to anything stimulating. Um, people I know take a half a, a modafinil or uh, it's a smart drug, by the way, for those of you listening, or they'll take a whole one and they're like, nah, I didn't really feel anything. It doesn't do anything. And it's just a statement to support the fact that um, all of our chemistry is just so different. And it's not only different between each one of us humans, it's different uh, based on so many variables in your lifestyle and what's going on with you that day and other micro and macronutrients present in your bloodstream. So with the feel free, start super small if you're going to check it out. Uh, if you're like me and you're very tolerant to uh, things that are, I guess, downers in a way, you know, uppers and downers, just to put it in the most broad way. I'm very sensitive to uppers, not so sensitive to downers. That's just me. Uh, in fact, I've discovered over the years 
Actually, I realized this when I was an incorrigible drug addict back in my former life that uh, when I would do things that were, you know, depressants and downers, it actually made me more extroverted, loud, talkative, happy. And if I ever did stimulants, I would just go sit in a corner and stare at the wall and be totally introverted, self-conscious and depressed. So I noticed and have noticed over the years, even with above board plant medicines and different supplements and things like that, that certain people find downers to be, um, <laughs> to, to really bring them down and they're very tolerant of stimulants. So you might find as you start to play with different supplementation that you um, fall on either side of that equation. And so it's good to have self-knowledge when one is experimenting with uh, things from nature, hopefully. And sometimes things that are synthesized in a lab uh, can also be very useful. But I just like to issue the caution there and encourage people to really listen to your body and trust your own intuition and be careful. You know, I'm kind of a, a nut and I test things because it's part of my job, right? To experiment with things and uh, find the effect and then share it with you on shows like this. But some of the things we talk about aren't for everyone. So tread lightly and be safe uh, when you're doing any of this stuff. Okay. So that's that folks. That's uh, hopefully some useful information on how to deal with pain in your body. We'll be right back at you after this brief but important announcement. Back in the mid 90s, when I really committed to my own health and recovery, one of the most important parts of that journey was getting into juicing. And I've had a bunch of different juices. I've gone through phases of doing juice fast and then, you know, now spending tons of money at the juice stores because I'm too busy and or lazy to do it myself. But I really believe that extracting the nutrients from nature's abundance of life supporting plants is really critical to a health regimen. However, it's expensive and inconvenient, or it used to be. Enter our sponsor Organifi. These guys make some fantastic powdered juice blends and superfood blends that are extremely potent, very well sourced, very pure, easy to use, delicious. And I've just been a fan of them for many years. So I'm really happy to talk about today's product of choice. It's called Organifi Red Juice. It's got 13 superfoods to support energy in a berry superfood drink. It's 100% certified organic, no caffeine necessary, and just two grams of naturally occurring sugar from the freeze-dried berries. The berry blend that's extremely nutrient-dense and antioxidant-rich. Tastes delicious and just plain water. You can literally stir it up with a spoon. So I like to use the Organifi Red Juice in that afternoon slump when I start to feel a lull or before a workout. Anytime I feel like I want another cup of coffee, but I probably shouldn't, is a time for Organifi Red Juice. It's also really convenient to use on a go. I'm here recording these plugs right now in Austin, Texas. I've got a bag of the little Organifi Red Juice packets, which is how I had one this morning. And so I really like the fact that they're not only very nutritionally dense, but they're easy to habituate into your life. It's not a hassle. It's not expensive. I don't have to go drop 14 bucks for the same juice at a juice spot and waste the glass and the time and energy. I just walk into the kitchen, pop one of these in a cup, stir it up, and I am done. So that's Organifi Red Juice. If you want to check it out, I highly recommend that you do. And I can't guarantee, of course, because I don't know you personally, but I can almost guarantee that you're going to love it. And as you drink your first cup of Organifi Red, you're going to be thinking, damn, Luke hooked it up. Thank you, Luke. So you can thank me later. But first, you have to go to Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I, Organifi with an I, Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. And if you use the code Lifestylist, you're going to save yourself 20% off. That's Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. And now back to the interview. Next question is from Megan. She says, anyone know of a way yet to make deuterium depleted water at home? I've seen the articles about progressively freezing water, but that's a lot of work. Are there any generators yet or in the works? And uh, I'll tell you what deuterium depleted water is in a moment and give you some educational recommendations. But based on all of my research and doing about seven hours worth of interviews with some of the world's leading experts on deuterium depleted water, I don't believe it's really possible to make your own 
in any meaningful therapeutic way. To get the PPM or parts per million down to a therapeutic level, it takes incredibly sophisticated equipment, uh, similar to a nuclear reactor from what I understand. So I'd be very weary of anyone claiming to make a home device that can do this. Not saying it's impossible. I just haven't seen anything out there that has proven itself to be viable. Now, for those of you listening that didn't hear any of the many shows I've done on deuterium, to put it in a fundamental, easy way to understand, it's a heavy hydrogen molecule present in the water and food and our environment that diminishes your mitochondria's ability to produce ATP, which is the energy that we use to live our lives. So when you have too much deuterium in your system, it tends to gum up the nanomotors in your mitochondria and makes it more difficult for them to produce energy. And you need energy to do everything. It's not just like energy to go to the grocery store, go work out. It takes energy to write an email or do anything, really. So if you're someone who wants mitochondrial function, drinking deuterium-depleted water is a great way to do that. You can help your body also deplete deuterium with dry fasting, something I've not done, but I've done some research on. seems to be quite valid. And also by uh, a strict keto diet over time and also just not eating and drinking things that are very high in deuterium. But based on my research and the experts that I've interviewed, drinking the deuterium depleted water is the most effective way to bring down the parts per million in your body. The brand I'm using currently is called Light Water, L-I-T-E, Light Water. And they make a DDW water that is 10 parts per million. So it takes a bit of math to figure it out, but I basically use three of those bottles in a 3.5 gallon bottle of Mountain Valley spring water, or I just got my um, AquaTrue system here set up and so that's working. And the, I guess the base level of deuterium in your drinking water will determine how much you dilute it with the light water 10 parts per million. I know this gets a little complex, but uh, if you go to the light water site, they'll give you some math and help explain how to do it. But essentially most low altitude municipal water or even low altitude uh, spring water like Mountain Valley from Arkansas, I haven't been able to find like, by the way, the chronic spring water here in Texas because it's low altitude and there are no mountains and the best spring water comes from high altitude Rocky Mountains. I'm working on that. If my friend Chris from Alive Spring Water is listening, <laughs> he's been trying to get it done and uh, find some water in Colorado he can ship down here, et cetera, and it's not happened yet. But Chris, I know you're working on it. And by the way, if you're in California, you're stoked because you can get alivespringwater.com delivered to your house. It's freaking incredible. I miss it so much. So I'm kind of making my own spring water here with a mountain valley, with my aqua true, and I'm diluting it with deuterium depleted water from light water. Most of the low altitude water that you'll find is around 150 to 155 parts per million. So you can see why adding 10 parts per million deuterium depleted water is going to give you a ratio that brings it down to approximately uh, between 80 and 100 parts per million, which is still enough to uh, get that deuterium out of your body and get the, the um, I guess, the dilution level in your body down by adding in water that is much uh, lighter in deuterium. Now with light water, I'm on a monthly subscription now. It's about 300 bucks. It's not a cheap biohack, but for me uh, personally, it's a priority. And so I make some other spending sacrifices to enable myself to use it. You know, just I'm mindful about maybe how many times I go out to eat or ways in which I'm squandering cash on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, I make room for that 300, but I don't know that if someone's really struggling to make ends meet right now because their business has been crushed by the monsters that currently run the world, uh, you know, that might be a lot. So, you know, deuterium depletion wouldn't be the very first thing I did if I like had only $300 to spend to improve my health. I think there are some other things that could be more meaningful. But if you're someone who's doing well and you think you can hack it, uh, I think it's great. Um, I've tested before and after doing a series of DDW and uh, my levels have gone down uh, consistently. So it's definitely legitimate. I also cured my, and I say cure, I don't use the word cure a lot, but legit, I cured at least temporarily the first time my dog Cookie's allergies by giving her the same water. And then maybe three years later, when we moved out here, she started getting this, 
I guess it's allergies. I mean, it's like hot spots. She's scratching. She's biting herself. She's just going nuts. And then I got her on the water here for about two weeks. No more scratching, no more itching. So I think it probably has something to do with the way your mitochondria produces energy and that probably, and I'm just spitballing here. Don't quote me on this, you scientists out there. But I'm imagining if your body has more energy, you have a stronger immune system and more tolerance to allergens uh, in your environment. Again, just a guess, but it definitely worked for the dog. Getting the cat on it um, is a little harder because this is a funny thing. It drives me crazy. I've really had to surrender my control issues on this one. It's Allison's cat, technically. His name is Jelly. I've grown to love him. He's a little black Persian. He's a nut. Very strange little guy. Uh, He will only drink water out of the tap. It has to be running cold water. So, and I'm sorry for you people that (laughs) don't believe in wasting water. Trust me, I don't either. But we keep a tap on in the bathroom that's just barely on, just dripping. And that's where he likes to drink his water. So I have not been able to hack the cat with the deuterium or even filtered or spring water. He is all about that tap water. He, He gets down with the fluoride and chloramine and all those things. And, you know, Allison's fine with it. So it's none of my business. I stay out of it. But when we move into the new house, we're going to get a whole house filter. And then our little kitty will be drinking some good filtered water as well. If you want to learn more about deuterium and deuterium depletion, as I said, I've done a number of episodes on it. They are number 165 with Dr. Q Collins and Laszlo Boros. Also episode 166 with Dr. Ann Cooper. And finally, number 340 with two-time guest Robert Slovak. And if you check those episodes out, we'll put them in the show notes. You will learn all you could ever want to know on this topic. Here's a great question from Nicole. And I'm not sure if I've talked about this on an episode before. I think this is one of the topics that I've been holding off on doing a whole show on until I can find someone who is a world-renowned expert on the topic because it's a bit of a niche. She says, what are the best non-toxic cookware brands? Now, I will say that most of your average cookware available in a retail capacity is garbage. Uh, They're made with cheap toxic metals that wreak havoc on your health. Even most cookware marketed as stainless steel, which sounds pretty, pretty good, right? Well, most of them are made with amalgam metals. So they mix metals, including aluminum and most commonly nickel, which are both extremely toxic if you're putting them in your body on an ongoing basis. Now, of course, the worst ever of anything in the cooking world is anything made of nonstick Teflon. It not only gases into your lungs while you cook, but it also heavily pollutes the food you cook in it. So when it comes to solutions, uh, when I get around to making a kitchen budget that would accommodate this, Salad Master Surgical Grade Stainless Steel is the best I've ever seen, but it's also very expensive. But that to me is the... Rolls Royce of cookware. Currently here, we use something called Extrema Ceramic Cookware, which is amazing. Uh, I like the ceramic cookware because it's very natural. And once you get the knack of how it heats up and cools down and just kind of how to cook with it, and I'm not a great cook or someone that cares to become one, but it took a minute of getting used to. But the uh, ceramic cookware from Extrema is totally non-toxic and is really more in alignment with how humans have cooked through evolution. Prior to being able to make things out of metal, we were using ceramic, right? And clay pots and such like that. So I kind of like the old school nature of it. It is a little bit harder to clean because things do stick to it, but it's like whatever, you scrub it down, throw it in a dishwasher, it's all good. Uh, Sometimes when I'm just lazy and in a hurry and I don't want to be that mindful of how I'm cooking, I will use a cast iron pan to cook meat But I don't generally advise that due to chronic iron overload from inorganic iron leaching into your food. Now, some people out there, and I would not agree with this, uh, based on my research, is they say, no, cooking with iron is great because you get iron into your food. Well, the iron (laughs) that's in metal is not bioavailable. And uh, I am of the opinion that most people are actually iron toxic. It's a whole other topic. I'll do a podcast on it soon. But uh, I do still cook in iron sometimes. I also donate blood about every quarter to get the excess ferritin and iron out of my body and basically allow my body to produce new blood that is lower in iron. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. 
which again, I'll cover on a later date. Now for cooking or rather boiling water, I use an all glass kettle. I found on Amazon, I forget the name, but I'll put one in the show notes for you. And this is incredible because of course it is like a chemist grade glass. So it doesn't break when you heat it and it doesn't leach anything into your water. So you can put some great deuterium depleted water in the tea kettle, which is what I do. I put a bunch of uh, chunks of chaga mushroom and uh, put those in the glass tea kettle and I just leave them in there for a couple weeks at a time. And then I fill it up with some good water and I boil that and I use that chaga tea as the basis for most of my drinks and elixirs. It doesn't really have a lot of flavor. The flavor it has is almost uh, kind of a vanilla. So it makes a great base for hot elixirs and a golden latte, like with the Organifi Gold or my uh, biodynamic coffee from Zen Bunny or any of the different drinks that I make. Uh, I just include that chaga in there. It's got uh, vitamin D2 and it also has melanin. So if you drink a lot of chaga tea, it can help assist your body's ability to build a solar callus because of that melanin. It's really cool. In fact, when you boil the tea, if you've got a really thick brew, you can see that it's very orange. If you like took some of it once it's cold, of course, and rubbed it on your skin, it um, kind of has the color of iodine almost. So you can see how if that's flowing through your veins, that you're going to be a bit more resilient to sun. Now, don't use that as an excuse to go out and get sunburn, but uh, that is a known fact just as a little side benefit there. Another thing to be mindful of is that many coffee makers and electric tea kettles not only leach cheap metals into your hot water, but also plastics in many cases. Now, I haven't done a lot of research on coffee makers, espresso machines, et cetera, that expressly state in their marketing on their website that they are made with non-leachable materials such as silicone as opposed to plastic or true surgical grade stainless steel that doesn't leach nickel and these other metals into your water. But I personally don't use coffee makers and electric tea kettles and things like that on a regular basis for that reason. Anytime, again, I need to heat water, I use an all glass tea kettle. While we're on the topic of water, we've got another question from Justin. He said, what is the easiest and most effective way to structure water at home? Does using a pyramidal or Giza pyramid angles clear quartz crystal below my water create enough of a vortex to structure it? I have no idea, Justin. Sounds like a great idea though. The way I look at all pyramids and I have them around the house, I have a Soma Vedic uh, crystal pyramid and actually any pyramids I find out in the world, I just put them everywhere around the house. I just figure the Egyptians didn't go through all that trouble for nothing. But in terms of how they really work, I cannot (laughs) claim to know that. Uh, And also a bit of a sticker warning here. This section gets a little bit woo-woo, but kind of not really. I mean, some of the things I'm going to talk about here are verifiable scientifically. Now, if you study the work of Victor Schauberger and Gerald Pollack, you'll understand uh, much more clearly the nature of water. And both of them talk about structured water. Structured water is the way water behaves in nature when it's flowing. So when you look at a creek or a river, it looks like it's kind of going up and down over the rocks. But really what's happening is that water is being spun into a vortex at all times, whether it's moving above ground or underground, unless it's moving underground in artificially manufactured vessels, meaning the pipes in your home, city water lines, things like that. But uh, in terms of water moving from an aquifer and coming up at the top of a mountain into a spring, that water comes out of the ground structured. In other words, when you bottle water, store water, or run it through right angle pipes, it loses its molecular structure and becomes, for lack of a better term, dead or flat. So imagine taking a bottle of Pellegrino, letting it sit there, sort of off gases over a couple days, and then you've got flat water. Well, that's a similar thing that happens to spring water. And anyone that has collected their own spring water will know that when you get it right out of the ground from a high quality, hopefully high altitude spring, that water feels alive. There's just something about it. It just has a different energy. And that's because that water is structured. And a number of other reasons I've covered on many shows about spring water. So restructuring water is one that is also kind of hard to prove. And that where that's, I guess, where we depart into the woo woo because there's a lot of different devices and practices, which I'm about to uh, explore with you, but there's not really a way that I know of 
uh, at home at least, to take some water, analyze it, then do some of these things to it, analyze it again and show that there is any measurable difference other than the feel of the water or how hydrated uh, it seems to make you, etc. So a couple of the things that I do, and I, I do a lot of stuff to structure my water and I just do it all and I'm hoping some of it works. Uh, placing the water near uh, Soma Vedic devices. I've talked about them a lot on the show for harmonizing your environment and making you more resilient to EMF, et cetera. Now, Soma Vedic have done some experiments where they've done the Dr. Amoto, by the way, a uh, great book on this. Well, it's not really, well, yeah, it is on water structuring, actually. It's just showing examples of unstructured and structured water. It's uh, called Hidden Messages in Water by Dr. Emoto, uh, who's since passed, but his son has carried on the work. And essentially what Dr. Emoto did was send intentions, music, words, different external influences onto water crystals. Then he flash froze them and observed the shape of the crystals once frozen. So for example, he would put the word hate on a bottle of water and the word love on, on another bottle of water, flash freeze them under a microscope, and then you'd have completely different structures. The one with love on it would have the most beautiful snowflake, just majestic uh, sort of shape and energy to it. And the ones that had hate on it would be this brown kind of misshapen, gross looking structure. So that proves to me that consciousness, and this gets a bit into the quantum physics realm of it, that consciousness, intention, energy definitely has effect on water. And some of Vedic have done some similar testing with freezing water near the Soma Vedic devices that to me would indicate it's definitely having the same or similar effect. Another thing I do is I put some of my great water out in the sun in a Miron glass bottle. And the Miron glass bottle is a, um, it looks purple on the outside, but it's essentially a full spectrum glass, meaning it has all of the colors in the rainbow, the natural spectrum of sunlight in the glass. And so when you run sunlight through it, has an incredible effect on the water. And that is one, again, I've not, I don't have a scientific paper that I can cite, but uh, I'll tell you what, if you drink some water that's been in the sun, even for 15 minutes out of a mirror on glass bottle, you could do an AB test of two waters blindfolded and you can tell which one it is. It's markedly different and improved. You can also run your water through something called a Vitalizer Plus Vortexer. And uh, they've got those on Amazon. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. I've had one of those for years. And one of the hacks that I do, and you can see this in a past episode I did with Ben Greenfield, where he came over to my house and we just geeked out on every known biohack uh, on the planet. And I showed him how I had set up my juve light, my little, my smaller red light, I actually have it here next to me uh, to keep the room red at night. And I would set up the Vitalizer Plus right next to the juve and then run the juve for 20 minutes, which is the time approximately that the Vitalizer Plus Vortexer runs. And I would run that red light through the Vortexer as well. So the water's being exposed to red light in a similar way that placing the mirror on glass bottle outside would do. And uh, that creates a wetter water. And that's going to back to the work of uh, Gerald Pollack. And that is... Uh, what they call exclusion zone water or EZ water, which incidentally is the same type of water created by this incredible device called the Nano V that creates a mist of this exclusion zone water that you inhale and is incredible for reducing and eliminating oxidative stress. Bit off topic here uh, with that because it's kind of um, based on a different purpose. But the point I want to make is that water has its own intelligent life force and that you can influence water in different ways to not only bring it back to its natural state as it would have been in nature some time ago, but also to improve any water before you drink it. One last thing I want to leave you here on the structuring. There's also a device that I learned about from Dr. Dean Howell recently, and it's called a grander. We'll put it in the show notes. It's called grander water, G-R-A-N-D-E-R. And this is quite famous for restructuring water. And there's a number of different ways that you can do it. Uh, I would say the most common application is to install a grander unit on the main water coming into your house after the filtration system, which is going to structure, according to them and many of their avid fans, restructure that water on the way from the main 
to your house. So if you take a bath in grander water, a shower, drink it. Uh, there are some interesting experiments they do on the various grander websites wherein they will water one um, growth of sprouts with grander water and one uh, growth of sprouts with regular water. I mean, the same water, but just run through the grander or not. So not like crappy tap water in one and distilled water in the other or whatever. Same water, but one structured and one not. And those results are incredible. I mean, it's like a 4X growth. So things like that get my attention. I like those sort of homespun, um, not placebo a bull um, tests like that. And you can do the same thing, for example, with a Wi-Fi router, right? You put a Wi-Fi router right next to some sprouts. Then you put some other sprouts in a little Faraday cage so they get no EMF and watch what happens. And the one uh, next to the Wi-Fi router obviously won't grow. <laughs> the one that is shielded from EMF will grow. Things like that are meaningful to me because it's not a subjective placebo influence thing. So you could give me a glass of water and say, hey, Luke, this is structured grander water and give me another glass and say, this is not. And of course, it's going to have a different effect on me and my perception of it will be influenced by my beliefs around that. When you're working with plants and animals and different other types of tests, like freezing water crystals under a microscope, the only possible placebo there is on the quantum level, wherein when you observe something, the behavior of said thing changes based on the intention and energy of the observer. So there is a bit of quantum influence in there with some of these things, but not so much human placebo. So on the grander, I'm definitely, based on my research, going to install one of these on our new home in addition to a filtration system. Of course, you might be wondering what filtration system are you going to use? I'm not sure at the moment, but I'm probably going to work on building something with Robert Slovak that is custom to the city water in the town I live uh, in the hill country outside of Austin. I'll definitely keep you posted on that as we dial in the water at the house. In fact, I'm sure I'm going to do a follow-up solo cast where I do a continuation of the one I did earlier, where I explained all of the different biohacks and ways that we're turning our home into a natural healing sanctuary. So stay tuned for updates on that coming soon. And now on to our final question. This one's from Nariv. He says, any biohacks for improving executive function, especially multitasking and processing speed, but other aspects also? Ah, oh, man, this is a question after my own heart because as I get older, I'm 50 now, going on 51 this year, uh, I find that my life is much busier than ever <laughs> and that the demands on my cognition are higher than ever. A lot of plate spinning and finding that balance of productivity, creativity, and also rest and restoration are critical. So it's not like the old days where I could just go hard, go hard, go hard, and just keep going. I definitely um, am always looking for ways to make my brain happier so that it works with me and not against me. So there are so many hacks for brain function, it's really hard to nail them all down. So what I'm gonna do is just rattle off a ton of different things that have helped me personally, or things that I've given to clients or friends that have made an impact as well. First, I think it's important to consider what might be interfering with great brain function. So it's a great idea at the uh, onset of wanting to optimize your brain function to definitely test for heavy metals, to mitigate any EMF where you sleep, as those are two of the biggest stressors. And I guess that goes without saying that if you sleep in a high EMF environment, you got to fix that. I've done tons of shows on it. I also have an EMF course called the EMF Home Safety Masterclass. You can find that at lukestory.com slash EMF Masterclass, wherein I teach you about six hours worth of stuff about how to fix that. Now, testing for heavy metals. Uh, I think I talked about this in the last solo cast. Quicksilver Scientific not only has some great testing for heavy metals, but also really simple protocol to get the metals out. So that would be a great place to start. However, that said, I'm going to lay out a few free and some expensive, some natural, some not natural ways that I've done this. First one being something called neurofeedback. And I've done this at a couple different places. I went to the BioCybernaut Institute in Sedona a few years back. Very impactful. I also did a lot of neurofeedback at Peak Brain LA, out in West LA. And neurofeedback is essentially a way to use technology 
to encourage your brain to produce the brain waves that you want it to produce when you want it to produce them. Everything in our mind is controlled by brain waves and they do different things at different times. So neurofeedback is a great way to train your brain to cooperate with you. In terms of recovery, something that I'm a huge fan of is NuCalm. This is a technology that uses an audio acoustic software that you listen to with headphones in conjunction with a biosignaling disc that you put on the inside of your wrist. And these tracks take you into a deep meditative state, into that great theta state where most of us meditators like to hang out. I've done a couple episodes on the new Calm technology. We'll put those in the show notes with Dr. Jim Poole. No, sorry, not doctor, just Jim Poole, the guy. Uh, but new Calm is like my saving grace, man. If I've had a stressful day, maybe my sleep sucked, Halfway through the day, around 3 or 4 p.m., I do a new calm and I wake up out of that. And sometimes I'll fall asleep a little bit, but it's really designed to not let you go down into delta, into deep sleep. So it feels like a nap slash meditation, but when you pop out of it, you're not groggy like you would be if you did like a 30, 60, 90 minute nap in the middle of the day. Another thing that's great for brain function and something I do every single day now these days, I've been quite disciplined with it, is some form of breath work. So whether or not that's holotropic breathing, the Wim Hof method, uh, so many of the different kundalini yoga kriya um, include different breathing patterns, pranayama, all this kind of stuff. Any way that you can get air in and out of your body that has been somewhat vetted or a framework around it created, breath work is incredible for brain function. I mean, honestly, also the Joe Dispenza meditations, I do those every day as well. I know you're probably thinking, how do you have time for this? Well, there's other things that I don't do. I don't really watch TV. Uh, I don't know. I just spend less time on my phone more and more, which is why my Instagram is pretty slow. (laughs) If you follow me on Instagram, which by the way, follow me at Luke's story. But it's kind of one of those things every two days, I'm like, oh God, I haven't posted Instagram because I really do my best to stay off my phone. Uh, Most of the news on my phone, at least my phone, the news I go to is pretty freaking depressing. So I kind of take it in small doses. But anyway, uh, to the point, I just carve out time. I find other ways to um, conserve time so that I can do a new calm or a Joe Dispenza meditation or do some Kundalini yoga, et cetera. Another great way in conjunction really with a yogic practice, breathwork practice, meditation practice, et cetera, is to really include some form of prayer. And I think when many people think of prayer, it reminds them of some religious affiliation. Of course, this is a principle of most, if not all religions, but my form of prayer is more of a scientific prayer where uh, there's a great book called Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox that speaks to this. A lot of the new thought movement in the 1920s and 30s in the US were really big on this. Uh, I think some things like A Course in Miracles and uh, many great works have sort of come out of the influence of that. Also, uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, that was sort of based in this Christian science. You don't have to be a Christian to practice any form of prayer, not the least of which being scientific prayer. But the idea here is that our prayers become very specific and targeted. We're saying these prayers when we've put our brain through some of those other practices in a very programmable place. And I'm talking about, you know, self-programming here, right? So that those prayers are going out into the field of consciousness at a time when our subconscious mind is most receptive. And this might not sound like it would do anything for your cognition, but trust me, when your brain hemispheres are balanced, when your brain is producing the brain waves that help you be creative or focused or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, uh, prayer can absolutely help you accomplish that. Another great form of meditation uh, to that end is Vedic meditation. Comes out of the same lineage as Transcendental Meditation or TM. Uh, I've been practicing Vedic for... Uh, many years off and on, I think less so in the past couple years as I've been really finding a lot of success with the Joe Dispenza guided meditations. But sometimes when I do new calm, I'll sort of combine combine that with uh, Vedic meditation or I'll just do Vedic sit in the car somewhere, you know, before I take a walk at the park or wherever it is or in an airport or on the plane. But I have definitely found Vedic meditation something very useful and was very consistent with it for many years. So I'd highly recommend that, especially if you're someone who tries to meditate and just finds it frustrating. 
for me, having a specific practice and being trained by a teacher was uh, something that made a huge difference and really helped with my compliance to the practice. Now, I'm going to go a bit fringe here on this one, but I just couldn't leave it out of the list here because it's just the truth. And that is something called microdosing. Now, the things that I microdose typically will be LSD or psilocybin. I know people listening that are a bit more traditionally minded are going, this guy is nuts. But there is uh, more and more research coming out all of the time from organizations like MAPS that are indicating clinically that micro, and again, micro is the key word here, guys, uh, some psychedelics have incredible benefits to your brain, such as neuroplasticity, meaning that you're able to change the way that you think uh, with much more success than you would on your own. So this gets a little tricky because of the legality. Of course, people are going to want to message me and be like, hey, I want to do LSD. Where do I get it? Uh, you know, I just heard a guy did it. <laughs> so, No, honestly, I mean, for obvious reasons for now, um, you know, I unfortunately can't direct anyone to a source, but I can say in my own subjective experience that uh, the two or so days that I microdose LSD, I find uh, that I'm able to be extremely productive focused, but also creative at the same time. It has an uncanny ability, especially for male brains, to help you with hemispheric synchronization, meaning you can jump back and forth from your right to left hemisphere, the creative and logical centers of the brain, which uh, is quite difficult for most men because we have a smaller corpus colossum. Colostrum? I always get that confused. Colostrum is the drink that I take from Sir Thrival. Colossum. I think that's it. Corpus Colossum. That's the bridge between the two hemispheres. And it happens to be larger in female brains. If you've ever noticed, God bless you females out there. Uh, I'm so jealous that you're able to multitask with such uh, grace. That's been difficult for me until I discovered microdosing LSD. Ha ha, found a hack. But again, you know, this is something that you um, <laughs> want to check with your healthcare professional. If someone's on, you know, some sort of psychiatric drugs, I mean, this could be very problematic. So I'm just, I'm again, just giving you my own experience here, not telling you to do this, not recommending that you break the law, that you do anything risky. And also keep in mind when I say microdose, that truly is micro. And based on my own personal definition, a microdose is a dose of something that is not discernible. So it's not like you took it and then went, well, man, well, I'm really feeling it. That would not be micro. Micro is when maybe the next day you're like, damn, I had a good day yesterday. What happened? You go, oh, I took two tenths of a, of a, a gram of mushrooms or you know, five to 10 micrograms of uh, LSD, something like that, right? So the dosing is incredibly important. And of course, your sourcing and all of that. But I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention that. Another thing in my experience that has dramatically improved my brain function in so many ways have been very intentional, planned out and ceremonial uses of things like ayahuasca and 5-MeO-DMT. Now, again, major caution flag here. This is not an option for all people and uh, of course needs to be approached with the utmost care and discernment. I've done quite a few episodes on the plant medicine and psychedelic world. So for this whole section, I would refer that you uh, go check them out and definitely do some research. I know this is becoming more ubiquitous in our culture and I think it's a positive thing, but it definitely does have its downside and there are some risks involved for sure. So I always hesitate to kind of share my experience with those things. But again, I would not be telling the whole truth if I left that out because I've been able to just heal so much of my mind and my psyche through some of those experiences. Uh, very carefully planned out, spaced out, etc. So get where I'm going with that. Let me rattle off a couple other great tools for you. Uh, my favorite and I would say safest overall nootropic is called Qualia Mind. Incredible product from Neurohacker Collective. That's Qualia Mind. Uh, one of the racetams, this is a nootropic or smart drug called paracetam. It's incredible for me for brain function, uh, cognition, verbal acuity, like paracetam is incredible for speaking. I took some of it before I recorded this podcast to help keep me on task and be able to talk for an hour and 15 minutes without stammering too much. Another great nootropic is blue canatine by Troscriptions. 
That's got methylene blue, nicotine, CBD, and caffeine. I'd also recommend dusk and dawn sun gazing. You can learn this safely online. Don't wing it. You don't want to hurt your eyes. But that is a great way to regulate your neurotransmitters, which of course regulate your mood and the ability to think clearly and effectively. The Ant Coil PEMF technology has some great settings for the mind and brain. Something I do to keep myself perky is molecular hydrogen inhalation. I've got a generator from a company called Vital Reaction and I I do that along with breath work. So I sort of do breath work of the hydrogen on most mornings and wow, talk about waking up. You can also do hydrogen tabs by Water and Wellness. And there's a great drink I've been using recently called Hydro Shot, which is a pre-made hydrogen water that is incredible for blood flow, including blood flow to your brain. And of course, you need that if you're trying to do some executive function work. I mentioned before the Nano-V that produces exclusion zone water vapor inhalation. That's also great for bringing down inflammation in your body and brain. And inflammation in your brain is one of the biggest challenges when it comes to thinking clearly and really having a sharp cognition. I mentioned earlier ice baths and cryotherapy. Again, great also for your brain, just bringing down the inflammation in your body. That's going to have an effect on your mind and the way you think. Infrared saunas, like the clear light and sauna space, uh, bulletproof coffee or coffee that is free of mold that you mix with some good healthy fats like uh, MCT, MC8, I think to be exact, and some grass-fed butter. Incredible for giving some uh, ketone fuel to your brain. Also, magnesium is essential for the brain. The brand that I prefer there is called Magnesium Breakthrough. Uh, Being on a keto diet or using exogenous ketone esters, I like a brand called Perfect Keto. Uh, Ketones are one of the two alternate sources for energy in your brain. You're either burning glucose or sugar or you're burning ketones from fat. And I find ketones to provide much more sustained energy and focus mentally. Next up is nicotine gum or lozenges from a company called Lucy. And nicotine is a great nootropic. When used sporadically in small doses, be careful, guys. Uh, Nicotine is addictive and take it from me. I found that out the hard way after many, many years of being off of it. Next up would be inversion therapy for brain blood flow. Uh, This you can do by doing a handstand or a headstand or, of course, uh, hanging in gravity boots or something like that. I don't have my inversion therapy thing. It's called a back revolution. It's this thing that helps me hang upside down. I don't have it here at the apartment. It's over at the house. So I'm not on it as much as I would like to. But when that thing's close by, I definitely do that every day, sometimes after or before the ice bath. And inversion therapy is just great. So what I do here at the apartment without my tool is I just do headstands. And I do that anytime I need to think clearly or wake up or oftentimes just part of my morning routine, which is what I did this morning. Ooh, here's a heavy hitter for you. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT. This I would say is probably the best thing I've ever done to restore and improve my brain function. Getting more blood in your brain and more oxygen in your brain is incredible. In fact, HBOT or hyperbaric therapy is the most common and most effective modality for TBIs, traumatic brain injury. And this was recommended to me very firmly by Dr. Daniel Amen, one of the world's foremost experts on brain injuries and brain health. I went in and got a scan from him. I forget the episode number. See, I need to do more oxygen. And uh, his protocol was, Luke, you need to go do at least 100 hyperbaric chamber sessions in a row. I priced that out and thought, hmm, $250, $350 a session. I'm just going to buy one. So I got one called the Viteris 320 by a company called OxyHealth. There's a video all about it on my website uh, in the web store because I was so stoked on this thing. And this thing is not set up yet down here. And honestly, I miss it. Like I got to get over there and get it going in the garage or something while we're doing the renovations here. And I'd also recommend uh, on this, and this one's going to surprise some of you, but bowel cleansing, super important. Uh, Many people don't realize the reason you have brain fog is because you're full of shit. Sorry to put it that way. When your bowel is not clean and working properly, you are reabsorbing those toxins back into your bloodstream, your eliminatory organs, and of course, your brain. So you definitely want to be doing some gentle gravity-fed colonics, or using something like oxy powder from Global Healing to make sure that you don't have decrepit fecal matter 
reinfecting you with toxins. I know it's not a sexy topic, but uh, this is a huge needle mover. I mean, any type of cleansing you're going to do, I believe should be started in the colon. Get the colon working right, get it clean and functional, then do your other detoxing, then try and do some of these other hacks to improve brain function. So uh, I think we're getting close to the end here. I've got a couple more somewhat obvious recommendations. The first one, and maybe the most boring of all, is to make sleep hygiene your top priority. I mean, man, on days that I don't get good sleep, I don't care how much of that other stuff I do. I could literally do every single thing on that list and I'm going to be hurting. There's just no way my brain is going to work like it normally would. So whatever you can do to get your sleep hygiene on point, and I've done a number of shows on this, uh, some tricks that I use that are kind of low-hanging fruit is to track your sleep with the aura ring. Uh, this helps gamify your sleep, maybe against you or some of your friends. I look at my score every day and I'm like, ah, damn it. What did I do last night? What did I eat too late to bed? Or I was exposed to blue light or I left the Wi-Fi router on, whatever it might have been. Uh, I can at least track my sleep and see what's working and what's not. I got this new thing called the Hap Bee. It's a little magnetic sort of uh, oval necklace that you put around your head and it induces different mood states. It's crazy. It actually works. That's what's so funny about it. But I'll put that on the uh, deep sleep setting and put it under my pillow. And then I track my score and I'm like, is this thing real? Does it work? I'll be damned. My deep sleep scores are incredible using this thing called the Hap Bee. So that's a great um, you know, addition is just tracking your sleep. And I would say if I had to pick a number one uh, sleeping tech biohack, it would be the Uller or the Chili Pad, which regulate your body temperature while you sleep and also save a lot of money you'd probably spend in the summer running the air conditioning all night. So I'm all about the Uller. Um, whenever I travel via car, I actually take it with me. That's how accustomed I've become to sleeping on a cold surface. And when you have a cold surface under you, it really helps to regulate your body temperature and keep you from becoming too hot. Oftentimes we're waking up at night because we're too hot and we don't realize it because we kind of fall back to sleep and we're groggy and we don't remember like, oh God, I woke up and I was hot as hell. Um, most of the time, in my experience, that has been the problem. If I'm cold at night, I'm going to sleep great as long as the room's dark and you know, I followed some of my other practices to ensure that my sleep hygiene is on point. But uh, I would say it's relatively useless to try to improve your cognitive function, uh, executive function, et cetera, as was asked in this question, if you are not really working on your sleep quality and duration. So I think that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on another solo cast. And if you found this information to be useful, please do share it with a couple friends or even post a link to the episode on your social media. I'll be back with you next Tuesday for the ultimate ozone show, the miracle molecule for radical health and energy with Ian Mitchell. And if you're someone who is curious about ozone, I think actually everyone should be curious about it. It's, it really is a miracle molecule. I definitely invite you to check that show out. Last but not least, let's thank our sponsors. You can go to buyoptimizers.com slash Luke. Use the code Luke10 there and save 10% off. You can get a great eye mask, the REM sleep mask over at Blue Blocks. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X. You can use the code Lifestylist there for 15% off. And don't forget also at Blue Blocks, you can find those Lumi Sleep Red Bulbs. They're incredible. No flicker. And they make a really beautiful warm red light. So that's a hookup. And don't forget, 15% off at blueblocks.com with the code LIFESTYLIST. And then our friends over at Organifi can be found at organifi.com slash lifestylist. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I, organifi.com slash lifestylist. Of course, we've got a discount code there. It's lifestylist for 20% off. So folks, uh, just know, as I said earlier in this episode, I know I mentioned a lot of stuff in these, man. I really try to pack these with value to make it easier for you. You can uh, go to the show notes for this, which you can find at lukestory.com. If you're on my newsletter, everything I just talked about is in your inbox already. If you're sitting there going, oh, damn, I could have had that in my inbox today. Yes, you could have. You have to go to lukestory.com slash newsletter. If you sign up for my newsletter, every Tuesday, you get an email with all of the links and clickable show notes 
and even a link to the complete transcripts of every single word spoken on each episode. But you have to get on the newsletter. Again, that's lukestory.com slash newsletter. And with that, my friends, I will look forward to sharing Tuesday's episode with you. And again, if you want to uh, ask some questions or even offer support to our community in the Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group, I definitely invite you to join there. We are there until we can find somewhere less censored to be. I'm working on that. You know, if you're in the tech world, come on, man. Like, where are you guys? We've got Telegram. There's a couple things out there, but no one has come along and just squashed Facebook and given us a better alternative. You know, there's still, unfortunately, are a lot of sort of uh, utility qualities in Facebook that make it useful. So we're there for the time being, but I imagine we will migrate to another platform that allows people to observe their God-given right to speak their minds and hearts freely. But for now, that's where we are. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Luke Story. You can find me at lukestory.com slash store. And that's a great way to support what we're doing there. And with that, I'll be back at you next week with a show all about ozone. <music>